It's so cool to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about some very cool research that me and my group at UBC are doing on the wisdom of forests. And I just want them to stand up so you can see who these young budding scientists are. Awesome. And I've also had the pleasure of working with lots of other young scientists who aren't here, and I just want to acknowledge their contributions. Um, so, like Rhianna, I grew up in British Columbia um, hiking forest trails. Oops. Here. And, but I grew up in the 60s and 70s, so I'm a lot older. Um, and back then, there wasn't so many um, disturbed forests on the landscape. A lot of the forest areas look like this, with big net networks of rivers and mountains and valleys. Um, and I learned how to live and love these forests by um, hiking and studying the forests and uh, now working in the forests. And I just wanted to tell a little story about my first encounter and my first realization about the wisdom of forests. So my best friend and I were hiking in the Stein Valley in one of these um, upper valley, Stein Creek areas, and we were up in this uh, hanging valley. It was way high up. Um, we were walking along this river um, bank that was um, all alder, had lots of alder coming in, and we started to, oops, oops, now you, so we started to notice these big, <laughs> oh, that was the giveaway, we started to know these big grizzly claw marks on the trees, and so I looked to Jean and I said, we better get out of here, we, we need to be the wise ones here, so we turned around and we went down the mountain and got out of the um, alpine forest, and we stayed overnight in this little trapper's cabin, and we were visited in the night by this huge pack rat. And we got up in the morning kind of shaken up. And we, we thought, we got to get out of here. And when we left, there was this really strong smell of cash, which is um, dead, rotting meat that grizzly bears had called in overnight. And so we thought, OK, we, we got to go. So we, we rushed down our steep little mountain trail. And we got out of the alpine forest. And we got down into the mount montane forest, which are lodgepole pine and with um, very few branches on the stems. <laughs> and so we got, we were, so we're quite nervous, and we got down into the Douglas fir forest, and um, the Douglas fir forests are, um, you know, they're, they're more uh, low elevation, dry forests, they're out of grizzly bear habitat, and I thought, oh, we're, we're good to go, you know? And I relaxed, and all of a sudden, I was behind Jean, and I smashed into her, and she goes, there's a grizzly bear. And so sure enough, 10 feet from Jean was a grizzly bear mother and her two cubs. And that mama bear was a smart bear. And she um, sent her two cubs up a tree and uh, really quickly. And so Jean turned around and she says, well, I'm going up a tree too. <laughs> so she went up this big old mother tree, this big Douglas fir tree on the left here. And it had all these big branches and she's climbing, climbing up and I'm going, <gasps> I gotta go too. So I start climbing up a tree, but I went up the little tree. And so I'm trying to keep up to Jean, and pretty soon my tree is going, er, er. and old, the grizzly bear at the bottom is going. Rrr. So we were up there in that tree for an hour. And um, finally, Mama Bear got her cubs down. We could hear them scritch, 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 scritch coming down the tree. And after a little while, they left. And so Jean says, well, we got to go too. And I'm going, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm staying here. <laughs> uh, anyway, she got down. So I thought, oh, I got to get down too. So we got down and we, we got on our packs. And we took out our pots and pans and we ran down that forest, banging our pots and pans. And we got down through the Douglas fir, into the Ponderosa pine, into the grass line, and down to the Fraser River. And we went, oh, thank goodness for the wisdom of that grizzly bear. She knew what to do. And the wisdom of that old tree also knew what to do. So now I, I, I want to talk now a little bit more about the science behind the for wisdom of forests. I knew that it existed. I, um, at the time, was working for a forest company. And my job was to reforest clear cuts like this. And um, there were lots of them. And uh, we basically planted one or two species. Um, it wasn't a very sophisticated program. We also weeded out all the species we didn't want. And I knew that there was something not quite right, that we were actually taking out the diversity of the forests and that these forests also were more susceptible to insects and diseases. I could measure this actually in my subsequent research. And so I started looking at what was going on below ground in my subsequent research. 
Um, and I started looking at these fungi called mycorrhizal fungi, and that's what all my students are working on now. Mycorrhizal fungi are obligate symbiotic relationships that all of our trees um, form. They need to have these symbioses in order to get water and nutrients from the soil, and in return, the, uh, the, the trees give the fungi carbon. So it's this back and forth exchange. Um, the fungi also do this cool job of protecting the roots against root diseases. So they're, they're basically providing a life support system for the tree, and the tree is doing the same thing in return. So, um, and there's so much of these fungi in the soil that actually under one of your footprints, there's about 300 miles of these little mycelium that are crawling through the soil, picking this stuff up. And what we found out is that actually these fungi connect trees together. And that these trees, as you're walking through the forest, are actually all linked together by this massive network of fungi. And out of this network, um, little trees grow out. And they are actually able to access this network of the older trees so that they can get to soil water and nutrients that actually those big old mother trees are, are bringing up from the soil. Um, and we actually uh, were able, one of my students was able to map this network. So this is a very simplistic map, but basically these, these green dots represent trees, and the bigger and darker green the dot, the older and uh, bigger the tree. And so you can see that, that the biggest green dots are the most highly connected dots in the forest. Right? They're connected to everything else. In fact, this one tree down here in the lower left-hand corner is linked to about 50 other trees in this little plot. Um, and then the little trees, which are the little yellow ones in the corner, they're establishing within the network of these old, old trees. Um, so these trees, these big old trees, we've um, called them mother trees. And we call, they're the biggest, oldest trees in the forest. All the, our forests have these big old trees, but they're hugely valuable in nurturing the young seedlings. And uh, one of the ways that they do this is that they, when they're fixing carbon in their, their leaves, they're actually sending that carbon down into the network out to the seedlings that are growing up around them. Carbon, nitrogen, water, other, uh, other elements as well. And uh, one of the things that we're finding is that these, these mother trees are actually sending more carbon and more nutrients to seedlings that are their own children, their kin. So we're getting this kin signaling going on and this kin recognition. Um, but they're also giving goodies to, the, to strangers as well. So it's not just all about the family. It's about the whole community. So these big old mother trees are actually looking after the community. It's pretty cool. We're pretty excited about it. Um, the other thing that we're, we're doing current research on is that we finding, we're, we're seeing that when trees are attacked by uh, insects or diseases, that they start communicating with the trees around them. So, um, for example, if western spruce, spruce budworm or mountain pine beetle comes along or some root disease, the, the, the trees that are getting affected will send out volatile chemical signals to the forest, or more interesting, what we're looking at is that they'll send signals directly through their mycorrhizal networks to the seedlings that are growing up underneath them. And, there's, and those seedlings are picking up on the messages. They're upregulating their de defense genes, creating more defense enzymes and hormones, and then they're more resistant to the diseases and insects themselves. So there's this passing of knowledge from these old trees to the young ones so that they're healthier in future generations. Pretty cool, hey? I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> so we think that these networks and how they nurture their young, how their complexity, the organization of them, um, is really critical to the biodiversity of our forests and the regeneration of our forests. And it's this sort of network and the redundancy within the network that gives the forest resilience. So we think that conserving the network and the trees and the fungi in the network is critically important. Um, this story might resonate a little bit with you. You might recognize the story in the Avatar movie. The Avatar movie, there was the home tree and the Navi people connected into the home tree. Well, it turns out that James Cameron, who was the director of that movie, did research on plant communication and signaling, and that's where that came from. So that really was based on below-ground networks, people linked into the below-ground networks. And I bring this up because people are really a big part of this equation, too. I'm talking about, about old trees, right? But it's also about us people and communicating with trees as well. And 
you know, if we look at Aboriginal uh, cultures, these old elder elder positions in society in in the in the human societies, but also plant and animal societies, have long been valued and and uh, reciprocated within the community. Um, even you know, there's lots of folklore or lots of hist oral hi history about how First, Na First Nations would communicate with different elder trees, and they would call them grandmother trees and grandfather trees through the South Americas and the North Americas. And so there is a reverence. And there's a reciprocity with these kinds of trees and societies. And I think that we should learn from this. So I'm just going to leave you with a few key messages that uh, I think are important. Um, elders are really the roots of wisdom in forests. I think I've, 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 I've told you that today and given you some real scientific evidence for it. And you probably already knew that in your hearts, but now you can go home and say, I know it's because they're sending signals and talking to the other little ones too. Um, and I want to, you know, leave with a few points about what I think this means for us and how we manage our forests in the future. And they, I think that they echo some of the things that have already been said today. But one of the things is, I agree with Ken. I think that we are cutting at a too, too high of a rate. And I think that's one thing that we can do to conserve these old forests, because they're valuable forests, they're valuable legacies that are responsible or have a, a big role in making sure we have healthy ecosystems in the future. So reducing the cutting, I don't think we're at a sustainable level. Um, number two is protect these elders, not just the trees, but the organ, all the organisms in, in the system that carry genes from past generations and that pass on their genes to future generations. Um, and to reforest properly, I think Ken also mentioned this, is that we need to pay attention, more attention, and I think we know enough that we can do a better job of reforestation to healthy, resilient communities. And that includes having diverse communities, adaptable and resilient forest communities. And finally, this talk is about connection, and I'm trying to connect with you about what we've learned in our studies about forests. And I really think that connection is the birthplace of hope and creativity, and it is our future. So thank you very much.